Hello, welcome back to Snappy Gurus. In today's video, we'll be creating the interaction system for our Harrogate. We'll start off by creating some folders and some classes to work with. So let's head over to Characters, Player, and create a new folder called Components. Within the Components, we'll be creating a new Blueprint class called the Actor Component, which will be called the Interaction Component. We'll then go ahead and head over to Gameplay and create two new folders, one called Interactables and one also called Interface. Let's head over to the Interactables and let's create the first Interactable actor which we'll be having called the Master. So we'll be using Polymorphism for this. So for that, we can create child and have each interactable have a different behavior. So we'll be calling this BP interactable master. We'll then head back and go into the interfaces. And within interfaces, we'll just create a new interface named BPI interactable. We'll then need to go to the UI folder Within the UI, I'll be creating a new folder called Interactables. And then within Interactables, we'll also create a folder called Materials. So we're going to have, when you hold the interaction button, you'll have a load bar come up, and also the button which needs to be pressed to interact. So we're going to create two new widgets, one for the load bar, so W Interactable interact load bar my bad. and then another widget called w interact message we'll finish these three later uh, and i'll also go over how to create the material from scratch um, and as always everything will be in the project script or the youtube description of this video uh, for you to download uh, if you would like to follow along that's fine um, or if you'd like some help, then that's fine also. Right, so now that we've set up our classes and folders, we can go ahead and create our interface functions. So we're gonna head and go over to Gameplay, Interfaces, and then BPI Interactable. Within here, we're gonna create three new functions. The first will be Interact, and we're gonna create two more, one called Action, and then the third, Release. We compile that, close that, and go into the Interactable Master. We will open the full Blueprint Editor. We can get rid of these for now. And now we're going to add the interface we've just created by going to the Class Settings and then just clicking the Add button here. We can now implement the functions we've just created from the interface. So you can just right click, Implement, the event. Like so. Interact will place up here. Action will be at the bottom. With action, we won't actually be doing anything with this within the master. Uh, this fun uh, this event will be purely for the child blueprint. Uh, so we can call for this event when an interaction happens. And this is pretty much like a uh, whenever it's interacted, whatever you'd like to do with said actor you can do here um, which will be very useful so off of the interact we're going to create a new widget and this will simply be the load bar we're going to, for the owning player we're going to get the player control we're going to get then promote this to a variable so we have a reference to the widget and then this w interact load bar ref then we're going to add that to the viewport we're going to then create a new custom event called held this will be useful so that when you are holding your interaction key we can have the progress bar slowly circle around uh, and then obviously the released for when it is released uh, we can then call for the held event here 
Next we're going to go ahead and go on the released. We're going to go and set timer by function name. And we're going to create two new functions. So handle button held timer. And we're going to create another one called handle button release timer. We can then go back to the event graph and in the function name for the event released, we can go ahead and copy the handle button release timer. Play, paste that into there. For the time, we're going to have that set at 0 0.01 and have it checked to looping. We can then right click the return value and promote that to a variable. I'm going to call that button release timer. And then we're going to do the same for the held. So we're going to can just copy paste the timer which we just created. A shortcut to copy paste is control W. You can obviously also control Z, control V. Uh, it's just faster. So we can right click from here also and create a new variable and then use this one as the button held timer. And we're going to change the function name and copy it from the button held timer. Yeah. Right, now we can drag this over here and we're going to also call for a clear and invalidate timer by handle. We can copy and paste that over here to the release. And then we're going to, for the held, we're going to get the release timer. If you hold control when you're dragging the variable, it will actually get, and if you hold alt, it will set. So that's just a nice nifty shortcut to use to improve your efficiency. And then for the released, we're going to get the held. This is purely for optimization, to stop it con like contradicting each other also. We can then create a new function. And we're going to call this remove load bar. And that will be placed over on the released. Right here. Right, now we can go ahead and look into the functions. So let's first go into the held timer. We're going to create a branch. So if you hold B and left click, it will create a branch, or you can obviously right click branch. We're going to do a less, uh, a greater than, sorry. And then we're going to get two new floats. One called button push time. This will drive the widget and also be able to tell how long we've been hold holding the, bullet, uh, the button for. So we're going to call this and have it as a float for the data type. This will go here. And then we're going to create another variable called button push limit. So for the button push limit, this is purely to say how long we want to be able to hold the interactable before it's interacted. So this will be set before uh, we play. So we're just going to set this for a default value of one for now. Uh, but this is changeable. So we're going to be creating this as an instance editable. So then when you create your child class of this actor, which we'll go into later, you can specify the uh, the time and length of the interaction. So now we've done that, we're going to go ahead and increment the button push to time. So off of false, we're going to set the button push time. And we're going to grab the button push time and get that and then add 0 0.01 as our timer is set to 0 0.01. We're going to go off of true and grab the action event which we've created. And then we're going to clear and invalidate timer by handle. And get the button held timer. If you're also wondering how I'm straightening the nodes, uh, if you just select one and then select another and press Q, it will uh, illustrate in quite nicely. And then after that, we can just remove load bar. 
Now we're going to go into the button release timer, which will be a slightly different. And we're going to get another branch again. And we're going to get an and call. And we're going to get another, if it's greater than, we're going to also get our two variables we've created. And plug them in right here. So the limit will be on the top because we want to make sure that it's the limit's greater than the time. And we're also going to get another greater than and to check if it's greater than zero. Off of false, we're going to clear and invalidate timer by handle and use the button held timer. We're going to get the button push time next for the true. And this is where we're going to decrement um, the button push time. So when you um, let go and stop holding onto the interaction button, this will decrement the time. So we'll go back to zero where it left off. And we're going to go ahead and grab the button push time here. Next, we're going to create another uh, function. Sorry. And we're going to call this update widget, which we'll be using later to uh, power the widget, um, the widget uh, circuit. Uh, using the button push time so we can just go ahead and plop that right here as that will be called every time this is decremented uh, which is perfect and also on the button held timer sorry we're also going to have that function placed right here too so in both the button held timer and button release timer, we're going to have the update widget function, which we'll add to later on.